Hi everyone, I'm Gabriel Zamora and welcome back to an episode, well I guess not welcome back since this is like the first episode of, Ga- well welcome to Gabriel's podcast. As many of you know, I have had a podcast for a cute little minute, but I put it on hiatus. There was a lot of behind the scenes stuff going on, a lot of work that needed to be done to it to make it more brand friendly. You know, I'm a brand friendly type of girl. Okay, so I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to not be sponsored. (laughs) You know what I mean? I still got bills to pay, y'all. I still got bills to pay. So I wanted to change the name of the podcast. So welcome to Gabriel's podcast. I also wanted to implement a um, live aspect to it. So like one of the things that I really liked was Twitch. Um, I loved how, like, one of my favorite streamers was Hassan Piker. Like, I love the whole setup that he has where he's there, his chat is there, but also things that they need to see. Um, That will definitely be implemented with episodes to come. But I wanted it to be very live, very interactive with me and you. You know? Not everybody's always going to catch the live episode, but the people who do bitch you gonna be in it um and then of course i might do edits here and there but that'll be more so in like the final video that goes up but whenever we're live it's raw and it is uncut just the way we like it baby (laughs) use the condom um so hi everyone welcome to gabriel's podcast i'm so excited as you can see i got a brand new logo my cousin did this logo actually i hired her to do this logo right here i thought it would just be kind of funny for it to be because remember shout out to my old podcast name blunt talk (laughs) that was a thing a lot of brands were like is this you know related and i'm like um maybe (laughs) so then they were like no you know we can't sponsor that and i'm like so then i'm like what am i how do i make it because i want to put in effort but Unfortunately, I don't have the bandwidth to be putting in a lot of effort into things, especially when providing to y'all. If there isn't a form of sponsorship behind it, not everything that I do is sponsored. Absolutely. That's not what I wanted to do. But I was like, you know, if I'm going to be putting effort into this and I want to scale it, I'm going to be able to hire people, hopefully hire an editor, hopefully like, you know, as it begins to grow and then I have to like pay people. So I want to make sure that this is sponsorable. So I wanted to change the name. I think Gabriel's podcast is kind of funny because it's like, oh, like what podcast are you listening to? Gabriel's podcast. What is it called? Gabriel's podcast. <laughs> it's just called Gabriel's podcast. You could just look it up as Gabriel's podcast. He's just it's the same. It's the same concept. Like we're just hanging out. Um, you know, we're just hanging out and I'm just talking about different topics. But I feel like having y'all in the chat is going to be just so cool, especially when I'm talking about certain topics and Maybe I'm wrong, or maybe your opinion differs, or maybe you agree with me, or maybe you want to add like a little bit more. Maybe I'm missing a little bit of something, or you're just like, oh my God, I'm loving this. Anything that you want to guys type, you can totally type right here and I'll try to get to it. I think it's going to be really fun to be able to have these live interactive conversations. Um, So yeah, it is now Gabriel's podcast. I'm working on, I own the Gabriel's podcast Instagram, but I own it on like a burner account where it was just like a random account that I didn't use as like in case of emergency type of thing. So currently my IG people are switching it over because I also own the Gabriel Zamora on Instagram. Um, But that one has like 16,000 followers and like I don't use it as often, but I feel bad because I feel like the people who followed me there are like diehards of like, yo, I fuck with you because not only do I follow Gabriel Zamora I follow at the Gabriel Zamora where I would post like random things or like content then I was like I don't know if y'all guys would like it on the main one and then I got over the mindset of thinking well is it not good enough like type of thing so then I started to just post everything I wanted to post on my main one and then I was like damn like the Gabriel Zamora is just kind of like sitting there um so I'm having them switch it over so that one's gonna be like Gabriel's podcast that way I can post like a lot more podcasty stuff on there and like be able to share it because also like the blunt talk instagram because it was kind of like flagged as hi everyone related it would kind of like hit my um my views like on my stories like sometimes i would share like a post from the podcast one where if i had like maybe a guest or something and i wanted to share it on there it would drop down like right now like my views are i want to say between 
depending on how busy the the day week is, it's usually between sixty to ninety thousand views a day on Instagram stories. Um, if it's like a an event, it'll go up from a hundred to two hundred thousand, depending on the the event level. Um, like during the Met Gala, when I like was commenting on like the looks, like those views went up to like two hundred and fifty thousand. It's just people were more interested, especially when there's like a major event and people are interacting with that event. Um, like when I went to Astro World, my views definitely went up, and it just means like more people are like, "Oh, this is interesting, and I want to see more of it." So then Instagram pushes it, but because that one was related to hi everyone. Instagram would like kill it and I would get like 2,000 views, which still nonetheless, I appreciate anybody watching my stuff. But when I'm an influencer and I'm trying to create content and I'm using my platform to further amplify the visibility on my content, I want to make sure that it is um, working within the game. Like, you know what I mean? The game of social media, like, unfortunately, I can't change it. So I got to play the game, you know? So I had to change the name. And hopefully that helps it. But yeah, that's basically why I changed the name. What do you guys think? Love this setup. RD Love says, love this setup. You should totally just stream on Twitch so you can puff on stream. Yes and no. The only thing is that I don't want to work on building my audience on Twitch. Um, and I know it's like, well, why not? But I know that a lot of people don't have Twitch. So I don't want to like stretch my... This is another thing that I want to talk about, like what I call y'all. Like I still like I I sometimes feel like calling y'all followers can I don't want it to come across as like rude or demeaning by anything because it's like, oh, you're a follower. Like, you know what I mean? Like some people are just followers or like they're not leaders um, and they just like do what they're told. And sometimes it can have that connotation. So I don't know exactly. Like I was thinking I even have it written right here. I want to like, I don't know if I want to call y'all like amigas or like primas, something like that. Like if you know in Spanish, like that's like cousins or like friends, um, because I feel like that's what we are, you know? And I understand like, I'm not trying to further make our parasocial relationship a little bit more toxic, but like, I feel like you bitches know me. Like y'all know me. Like I don't try to overly curate the image that I put on the internet. What was I talking about? Twitch. Oh my God. See, very blunt talk vibes. Um... I don't want to like stretch all out my amigas. I don't want to stretch out my amigas and like what platforms y'all have to get. I try to like minimize it. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Twitter. Twitter, Snapchat. Um, do I really use Snapchat? Like not really to be quite honest. But I feel like having it here on YouTube when a lot of y'all are already subscribed, already watching. If you have your post notifications, um, turn that on so that next time um, you'll be notified whenever I go live. I'm always going to use this same kind of um, Gabriel podcast live. It should be called Gabriel's podcast, um, but whatever. As you know, it'll say Gabriel's podcast live. That way you guys know like, oh my God, I want to watch it live. Like very much like the unedited version because I won't probably use this version on my main one maybe later on when I get super comfortable and it's running at a grade a type of level where I could just hit record and it'll just go live great but right now I'm like I gotta edit out that beginning and like things like that I'm probably just the beginning I don't know if I'm gonna say anything else crazy you know what I mean <laughs> we don't want to get hate crimed on twitch <laughs> oh my god is that a thing especially not during pride month <laughs> don't delete this live when it's over Gabby okay one thing that I want to do is um I definitely, I'm not going to delete it. I have all these lives saved um, on my YouTube. And I think eventually, like, I want to create, I want to focus more on cultivating my community here on YouTube. I think that I took a, I took a good break last year um, because I was just like, yo, like, how do I, how do I reconnect? How do I make a change? Because I started to get, like, bored. I started to get bored with that whole, like, film and be perfect and all in 4k and to makeup and do this and this, 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 this. I was becoming this like robot of an influencer and I didn't like that so now I've been like um one of my inspirations especially here on YouTube has been Emily D Baker I've been studying her a lot more um because I love watching her like she's a lawyer right like she I don't know yeah right she's like a lawyer I, I'm trying to remember her intro she's like I I'm a badass lawyer like she has like so many years as a district attorney. I think that's what it is. 
If you don't, I'm pretty sure you know who Emily D. Baker is. If you, especially if you watch the like the Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp trial, I was watching it religiously on her live stream, and I loved her interaction. I love the type of community that she's created, and very like exclusive content on there, like creating like a members only type of live. Like, um, I want to be able to like create things like that. Maybe it doesn't have to be members only. Maybe like members only for like the live live unedited ones. Um, maybe I'll do like a a. A members only live where y'all can ask me anything no holds far it'll be private for members only so it can't go anywhere people can't clip it um think i don't know it's just these are all thoughts this is very much the beginning of this podcast i'm super excited because i just feel like this setup is gonna be so cool yeah she was a district attorney marcella's in the house do marcella i live for marcella underscore j underscore c I she has been following me forever. She's been super engaged. I really do keep up with a lot of y'all who have been like really interacting with me for a very long time. So I always appreciate y'all. A Patreon situation for the uncensored, unfiltered lives, which could be really interesting. I've thought about Patreon simply because you can use like music um, and nobody knows. You know what I mean? You can watch TV shows. Like, I also um, follow Bussy Queen here on YouTube. Um, and he is a... I, I, I would say he's a drag queen because he dresses up in drag, but he talks all about drag race and the drag race kind of community. And he has like a Patreon where he like reacts to the show live with his audience and like does very live things where like I could not get away with on YouTube, like watching certain TV shows. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like then it's like, oh, then I got to make a Patreon. Like, I don't know. I think the... I'm going to find out if on, like, YouTube members only, we can kind of create, like, if I can, like, react to certain things like that. I don't know. I'll find out. I mean, y'all y'all swear y'all want me to watch TV shows with y'all. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Also, let me know in the live stream what you guys think about what, um, I guess, what, like, our nickname could be with each other. Like, should I just call you Amigas? Like, hey, I mean, like, it's not going to be everyone. Like, hi, everyone, of course. But, like, when I refer to y'all, like, oh, my amigas. Like, if you're a real amiga, like, or prima or, like, whatever. Other names. I remember, like, somebody had, like, recommended one time I was, like, on a live. Because I've been testing these lives for a minute. Somebody had said, Ga babies. Could <laughs> you, like, using my name or morritas. Uh, but I feel like Morritas is too Spanish. Uh, my s'mores, but with a Z, like s'mores. <laughs> there was also Gabrona, like very Cabronas, but like Gabronas, like my Cabronas. I don't know. You guys tell me. I don't know if it has to be Spanish or if it could be English or mi bebes. Are you my bebe? bebe? She's asleep, actually. I know y'all are going to ask me. Comadres. <laughs> but like how do you translate comadre into spanish i still don't know how to translate comadre into spanish so keep that in mind val rodriguez like no no you totally should post your lives on patreon or something like that your lives are gems but yeah see i think it might just be easier to kind of create um make it here on like mem like create a members only eventually here on youtube to where it is just here you know, I don't know if, like, everybody's going to want to create a Patreon and all this stuff um, just to subscribe. I know some of y'all will. I totally appreciate that. But I want to make it easier for a lot of y'all, you know? I think that might be, that might be the best. Let me make sure you can't see my store ID. So y'all don't find out where I go to Starbucks. But if you're wondering what Starbucks I'm drinking, I'm drinking a iced caramel macchiato venti with oat milk and upside down. It looks like this. It's so yummy. My Gabes. My Gabes. Oh my God, hi Sophia. All the way from Pasadena, Texas. I'm from Pasadena, Texas. I'm liking s'mores. My s'mores? Are you guys my s'mores? <laughs> Because, like, okay, you know how I thought about it? I literally was thinking about it today. So, on my stories, on IG, if you... I'm sure you follow me on IG, but if you don't, make sure you follow me. But also, keep up with my stories because I feel like we have... I have created such a fun community on my stories um, to where I have a lot more fun. For a while, like, I wasn't using my stories, I feel like, to the best of our communication ability. 
And now I think it's so fun. Y'all have been really interacting with it so much more, um, which I really do appreciate. And I think that that's what ha <gasps> I follow 666 people, dude. I want to get up to 713. So if you don't know what 713 is, that's like the Houston area code for like te telephones, like back in the day. And then it became like 832. Um, like my phone number right now is still a Texas number and it's an 832 number. Um, but 713. I'm actually going to get that tattooed with my best friend, Jesus Hair. Um, we want the 713. And if you're from Texas, you know that they can make the 713 look like a star. And we want that because we're H-Town baddies. You know what I mean? Um, what was I saying? Instagram stories. Okay, 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 okay. So on here, I was talking about how <laughs> I was like, good morning. Um, because yesterday I went to go get a Manny Petty and I was like, you know, remember to get a Manny Petty and if you could get somebody else to pay for it for you, even better per, you know, I pay for my own Manny Petty, but I was just like, you know, if you could get it, like if you could get that shit for free, even better, you know? But some of y'all were like, oh my God, pay for my Manny Penny. Are you going to pay for my Manny Penny? Like, you should pay. And I'm like, you bitches are crazy. I ain't Charles Mann. I'm not Charles Mann. And it's actually kind of homophobic that y'all are asking me, a gay man, to pay for y'all, straight women's Manny Petty during Pride Month? During Pride Month? Very homophobic. <laughs> so then some of y'all, like... The way y'all respond is, it was very 50-50 to that whole thing. Some of y'all were like, shut up and pay for my Manny Petty. <laughs> like, y'all don't even give a fuck. You're like, shut the fuck up. You're going to pay for my Manny Petty. And some of y'all were like, OMG, I am so sorry, Messi. Send me that memo because I'm an ally. Like very, and I, I said, I have two types of followers. And that's the part where I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I just want to call y'all followers, you know? Um, Because it's like... I don't think y'all follow me to, like, follow everything that I do and be just like me and buy every single thing. Like, I think y'all, like, keep up with me in, like, that friendship level of almost, like, a, a friend and a cousin type of thing because we're very close. So, like, we're almost family, bitch. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we drag each other. And I said, y'all either love me or pick on me. Like, and I wouldn't have it any other way. So I'm like, I don't know what I, like, s'mores, amiga... Prima. I don't know. Let me see. What are you guys saying? Where's Bebe? She's sleeping. <laughs> My Gabe's. Gabe's babes. <gasps> Gabe's babes. Babes? Babes. <gasps> My babes? But with a Z? Babes? Nobody said that, but somebody said Gabe's or s'mores. Definitely. Magdalene? Bitch, should I say that right? Because that's spelled real different than what I'm used to saying reading as Magdalene. Magdalene Heffington. Gabe's or s'mores, definitely. Um, Gabe's babes. Gabby's girls. Ooh, Gabby's girls. I'm so bad about the Mexico drug cartels. <laughs> okay, we're going to get to that, I promise. That's actually my next topic. Love you so much. Aw, thank y'all. 666 a vibe. Purr, you know. Purr. Oh, no, you better follow a rando page, lol. No, 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 I'm going to keep it at 666 as long as I can. <laughs> um, Your lives are like my life. Where was I? What was I doing? Oh, my God, I don't know, babes. I don't know. Make sure you turn on that post notification so you can be notified exactly when I go live. Because um, today I'm going live and it's like on a Friday. But that's because I was I wanted this to go up on Thursday, yesterday. But I've been busy with a boy. <laughs> whatever leave me alone leave me alone okay like you you can't see it but there is a hickey right here look how good i covered it up i know you can't see nothing you can kind of see it it's like right there um there's like slight discoloration but i'm assuming it's like the shadow so don't judge me okay i covered it up i know amber heard i covered it up actually perfectly um the audacity do you get a base with your Manny Petty? No. So with my Manny Petty, I only get a buff. Um, I have them trim everything and I have them buff them super shiny because it lasts a very long time as opposed to like a clear coat or anything like that. I also tip well because I know it takes like a little bit more effort when they go into it. Um, but you know what's one thing about like Manny Petties? I have very delicate cuticles because I don't get them done as often as I should be. I probably get my Manny Petty like every two, three months. I know I should be going a lot more often, but to be quite honest, sometimes I just... 
I'm in the restroom and I want to cut them right now. It's and it's like eight midnight or like two in the morning and I'm like, oh, like I hate when my nails are too long. I know I'm like one of the only beauty boys in the beauty space that doesn't have like nails. Well, Manny, yeah, me, me and Manny don't have nails. I'm gonna make Manny wear nails because <laughs> um, I don't like when my fingernails are really long because I scratch my head a lot. I scratch a lot of things like um, and my nails get really dirty and I hate how that looks. I know. I don't be fingering women, but <laughs> fingernails, regardless of if you're a straight man doing what you got to do to women or if you're a gay man, it's just, it's not a cute look. Okay. Um, but yeah, I get, oh, I was saying like my cuticles are so sensitive and they be like, they be nicking me and they're like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, it's fine. Like I have sensitive ass cuticles. Um, but they put like a little liquid on me all the time. And I just like go with it. Like I really don't know what they're putting on my hand. And I trust them with my life. Like I fully trust a nail lady with my life. Like when they nick me and they put something on me, like, okay. Like, period. Like do what you gotta do, babes. She could be she could be adding anything on there. She's probably like water and sugar. And she's like, no, this is gonna heal it up. If she's like, take this shot of black liquid, it'll stop the bleeding. I'll be like, okay. <laughs> I don't know, like, are y'all like that as well? Like, I trust these women with almost my life at this point. Um, okay, what are you guys saying as well? So proud of your pronunciation. All the love from Corpus Christi. Magdalene, oh, I did say it right. Honestly, same, you're a good liar. Oh my God, stop calling me a liar. Is it the Mexican puppy? Oh my God, am I? Dude, I feel like I've become more... Oh, I thought you were talking about me. We're talking about the guy who gave me the hickey. No, this is a completely different guy that I literally landed in LA on Saturday morning, re- rested all day because Manny, Daniel, and a, and a few friends, we wanted to go out Sunday night just for drinks because it was WeHo Pride last weekend. This weekend, it's LA Pride. I don't know why it's different, to be quite honest, because WeHo is in LA, but I'm just, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to be picky, but I'm like, isn't it the same city? Um, But... We went out and I met him and it's just, it's been a whirlwind, girl. It's been a whirlwind. This is a new Mexican puppy. He is Mexican though, so Latina tings. <laughs> Much love from South Africa. Zaza, 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 zaza. Vanessa Jump, period. Amber Heard could never. What are your opinions on selling feet pics? Um, I really want to sell feet pics. I feel like that would be kind of iconic, right? Um, okay, so next topic of conversation. Um, you guys let me know in the comments um, what we should name each other's relationship. S'mores, Gabe's babes, Gabe, Gabby's girls, um, babes with a Z, amigas, primas, whatever you guys want. Okay, the next topic is Mexico. So I got back saturday morning and i know a lot of y'all are like oh my god i'm still mad over that video well you can stay mad (laughs) i'm just kidding um okay so i went to mexico damn bitch it wasn't even last week it was the week before on a wednesday so i was there for like 10 days and i technically only worked for like three days which period that was a nice little vacation um so shout out to the company um i still can't legally talk about it because we i signed an nda and until the project actually comes out then i can talk about it and i'll be able to like um i mean it's nothing as extra probably when i when it comes out i'll mention it in the podcast tell y'all kind of like a behind the scenes of what the shoot was like um but until then i can't legally talk about the shoot um but i can tell you that i was in mexico and i had an amazing time like i was exploring um i didn't meet a boy i know in my youtube video like i'm a good liar like i'm a good liar and i know i'm a good liar you know why because i studied acting and what is acting lying but getting paid for it (laughs) Ah! so i went to mexico and i um Okay, so I was filming that YouTube video and I wanted to create a video because I was like, I need to stop overthinking my YouTube videos and thinking that they have to be overly perfect or like overly curated, filmed in perfect lighting with um, with a 4K camera and it requires two hours of footage condensed down into 20 minutes because I feel like that's what I was used to. But now I'm like, no, like film for an hour, maybe even less um, and you're done. And you're done, Gabriel. Like, anything more than that, you're going to stress yourself out. You're going to spend too much time editing. Um, so why do that to yourself? So just 
create content, like just create content. And as you go, like it can always change and evolve, but overthinking it. Why is this so hot in here? Is it because of this light? Oh my God, I need to like turn the AC on, y'all. Give me a second, dude. Okay, there we go. That's 73, but like there's this light, there's this on, this sunlight. So it's a little warm in this room. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, that I wanted to film a YouTube video because I was like talking to you guys about going to Mexico. You guys were living. You're like, show us more. Talk to us more. T tell us more. And I was like, okay, I need to get better at YouTube videos and creating content more in the moment. Um, one of my friends that y'all guys know very well here is Laura Lee. Um, she pushes me in the way that she creates content. I really admire the way she creates content. She just pushes it. And we even joke about it. I was like, God damn, bitch. Like, you fucking upload so many videos. She uploads two YouTube videos to her main channel a week. And she has a vlog vlogging channel and she has the podcast full coverage which i'm on one of the episodes with with manny like full coverage Lori Lee manny um so that bitch is working she has her makeup brand she has her clothing brand nudie patootie um she has Lori Lee los angeles the makeup brand she has like she's always working and i'm like okay i'm not gonna be that girl because i'm not that girl but i want to be at least 25 percent of that or like 50 percent of that where i'm really pushing myself to just create content yes that's authentic to me um to where i'm still like excited about it but not overly thought out or overly executed like no shade but like there's a lot of influencers who like have overproduced their creation that i even as a part-time fan of a lot of these creators I i've lost interest you know it's like when when it's overly produced there's so many cooks in the kitchen um I feel like the, the messaging really gets lost. Um, so I'm trying to see how I can still have my voice, still create it, still be 100% authentic, but elevate it and create more of it. Um, but yeah, so the Mexico in the YouTube video. I don't know how I went on that tangent. As you guys know, I love a tangent. Can you do vlogs? Yeah, I'm going to start doing vlogs more. Um, I definitely... I feel, feel like vlogs are a lot easier to be quite honest because it's just what you what you captured you just gotta like mix it up it's very much like whatever you got in the fridge you're hungry make something to eat <laughs> just make something to consume babes and I think that'll be really fun like another person that I really admire in, in kind of vlog creation is Alondra Desi um one of my friends I just I'm obsessed with her she's stunning she's so funny she's so sweet one of one of the sweetest people I've ever met but also her content creation is very relaxed, yet you really get to feel like you're hanging out with her. And I even watch it, and it's like, when she does her makeup, it's not like this super elaborate, like, triple cut crease with 50 different colors and shapes and things like that. She's like, no, bitch, I'm just trying to show you as, like, my friend, like, da-da-da. And it's so chill and so, like, authentic, and I really, really like it. So I've been getting really inspired as to, like, by other content creators on how I want to create myself. Vanessa Joan, period. Gracias, queen, all the way from South Africa. Purr, we love a little, a little tip. Um, thank you, I really appreciate that. Um, okay, so the YouTube video. I wanted to create it because I was like, okay, well, I'm in Mexico, like, how, like, I want to show you guys the makeup that I've been doing, which is very simple. And I've also been traveling with it. And then I was like in the moment. And then I was like, well, I can't talk about why I'm in Mexico. So why not just lie? <laughs> like in the moment, I was like, just lie, Gabriel. I think I like edited that part. I was like sitting there. I was like, what can I say? What can't I say? So then I was like, you know, fuck that. I'm just lie. So I, I'm very good at lying on the spot. I am. I'm not going to lie. I'm very good at... I'm not going to lie. I'm very good at lying on the spot. Um, no, but it's true. Like, when I say I'm not going to lie, it's because I'm really telling you the truth. I'm not going to say that stuff. I'm not going to say I'm not going to lie when I'm lying, you know? And also, I'm the type of person where if you ask me three times, I will 100% tell you the truth, even if you're like, hey, what do you think about this dress? I'm like, oh my God, it's so cute. What do you really think about this dress? It's cute, girl. What do you really think about this dress? Personally, I think it's very ill-fitting and the color doesn't really complement your skin. But if you like it, it's absolutely up to you. I'm very much that. Don't ask me too many times to tell you the truth because I will tell you the truth, even if it hurts your feelings. Unless it's like, 
I loved him and he cheated on me. Am I a bad person? And I'm like, no, girl, you're not a bad person. And you asked me multiple times, I'm like, bitch, you're not a bad person. I'm like, even if I think you're a bad person. What is this tangent? We're supposed to be talking about the video from Mexico. So I did not move to Mexico, okay? I did not move to Mexico. I know a lot of you were like, um, oh my God, you moved to Mexico. I mean, that's the title of the video, why I moved to Mexico. I think the title of this video is why I moved back to the US because, <laughs> but it's ghetto. I think I even like, what did I name it? Look, I like typed it into my notes of what I wanted the name to be. I moved back to America and it's a mess <laughs> because it is dude but the mexico video i was just like in the moment um i was not there for a boy i know would have been such a fantasy very latina of me to be with like i know i shouldn't be glamorizing narcos and drug dealers but if you've seen that show queen of the south i feel like that's me babes i feel like that's me like babes so I glamorized him. I'm, am I proud? Not 100%. Am I going to do it again? Maybe. Am I going to continue to lie? Absolutely, because my my motto is gaslight, gatekeep, and lie. I'm tired of being the nice person. That part of the video was 100% true. Gaslight, gatekeep, and lie. That's my new motto because why not? I'm tired of being the nice one. I'm tired of being like perfect all the time. Um, I am gonna be brand friendly because I'm trying to be sponsored. <gasps> oh, fire truck, fire truck. It's like hella busy today in the city because it's LA Pride. So it's hella busy. And I don't know if some of y'all know, but I live in downtown LA in like a high rise. So um, downtown is pretty, pretty packed right now and like there's so many parts that are like cut off like one of the things that i love to do in downtown is ride scooters everywhere but all the scooters are gone so i'm like i mean that makes sense because it's gonna be such a busy weekend that it would just be a mess to have scooters everywhere probably hitting people and all this stuff so they're all gone right now but i live i live it's like cleaned up they're like they clean downtown up like i'm not gonna lie i'm like everything looks a lot cleaner hmm. why can't y'all keep it like this all the time Yes, that video was a telenovela, dude. It really was. Like, I really was living in my little own fantasy, my own little world of like, oh, what would I do? And like, I just like, I can lie. Like, I love improv. Like, I kind of studied that when I was studying acting. I definitely want to get back into that, especially in LA. If you guys live in LA and you know of like a good like acting class or a good improv class, let me know. DM me on Instagram. Um, and I'd love to attend because I want to take I want to take more acting classes just to like refresh it. You know, to like refresh that muscle. I still feel really comfortable with it, but I definitely want to get better at it. And I don't know, maybe maybe get back into acting. Like I literally moved to LA for acting, dude. Like I moved out here and then I started to get into social media because I understood the how you can utilize the commodity of a, of a following um, to your advantage in getting more roles because it's like, well, you already have a built-in audience that's gonna watch as opposed to taking like a risk on somebody that's just like, oh, you're really good at it, but so is this person. Like y'all both are really good, but this person has a following and an audience already. And I wanted to be that person of like, you're good and you have an audience. Um, and now I'm stunning. I'm a triple, triple threat. You know what I mean? Like before I was cute. You know, it was cute. Now, I'm stunning. Um, I have had work done though, so. Do you guys watch Lori Hill on here on YouTube? I'm obsessed with her. She's like obsessed with surgery and she like breaks down like celebrity surgeries and a lot of them I'm like, yeah, bitch, they did get all that shit done. Like I recently watched the one that she did on Lana Del Rey and I was like, yeah, she clearly got work done. And Lana Del Rey has like put out a statement. She's like, I never got work done. And I'm like, girl, now how'd your lips get so fat? How'd your face get like that? Like Tom Cruise, she recently did one, a one on Tom Cruise. I was not aware how much work Tom Cruise has had done to his face. He has had a lot of work done, which, hey, no shade. No shade. Like, you know what I mean? I I totally support anybody getting work done if it if it's their... Um, if it's something that they want to do and it helps them be a lot more confident or it makes them happier, like, absolutely. Like, I'm a person that, like, clearly I've had shit done because it makes me happy. Um, it also gets me men, so. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? Mexico. Okay, so that video, yeah, um, 
It was fun. I think it was fun. I want to do more videos like that where it's just me sitting down, talking to you guys. A lot of y'all really liked that, even though I was lying. A lot of y'all were like, I really like this format. It just felt like I was talking to my friend. Um, whenever they called me in the room, because in the video, like, I get a phone call literally as I'm filming. As I'm filming, I get a phone call to, like, my room. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I get up and I go answer. And they're like, oh, do you want, like, your room clean today? That's basically all they were asking. I was like, no, not today. Like... That's uh, that's all I said. I just said it in Spanish. I was like, no, hoy no. Gracias. Um, but then I sat down and I was like, lie. And I was like, oh my God, isn't it crazy? He just called me and I was like, I can just lie, dude. Because it's not that like I love to lie all the time. Like I love to lie, but it's not all the time type of thing. But how my mind works in the moment, I am thinking two sentences, three sentences ahead of like, if I say this, what it kind of conversation is is going to lead into like sometimes it's like no 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 gabriel don't bring that up because then if you bring this up they're going to say this and you're going to have to say something like this or that or that like don't bring it up. i can be very in the moment like one time okay one time <laughs> i can tell you this exact example i was going to this hairdresser and they were cutting my hair and i on the way there i was talking to my best friend and i was like oh my god like bitch she's this person is one of my favorite people that has ever come in here simply because I can book them the day of or like the night before. You know what I mean? Like it is my obsession. They are always available. And my friend was like, yeah, bitch, because they probably aren't that busy. Like they probably don't have that many clients. And I was like, period, like I'll be that one client that's fucking living. Right. So then in that moment, as I'm getting my hair done. Um, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, I was like, like talking to my best friend how like I am so obsessed with you because and in that moment, I was like, you can't say I'm obsessed with you because you're not booked often. Like, that's kind of like, that's, that's not a fun thing to say, Gabriel. In that moment, I'm thinking that, like, quickly, just in my head, I was like, you cannot say that because it it could just, it, it's just not fun. So change, pivot. And I was like, I would, because you've been like, you understand my haircut and like, that I can think really quickly on the spot. So um, that's how I can lie really quickly on the spot as well. <laughs> I love to lie, dude. I love to lie. Um, yeah. What do you guys say? <laughs> so I'm one of your older listeners. So what is gatekeeping? So gatekeeping, Tracy Turner, is kind of like, you know how like my eyebrows, I have never told y'all who my doctor is and I never will. That's gatekeeping. Basically just not giving you information. So let's say you you buy a really cute shirt and somebody's like, oh my God, I love your shirt. Thanks. Where'd you get it? Not saying where you got it is gatekeeping. And with certain things like, um, hey, like I saw like sometimes it's like it can be thought of as bad. But me personally, a lot of the time, like I don't care. Like I'm going to gatekeep because bitches love to keep up and bitches love to hate, but keep up with what I do. I know a lot of people. No, 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 no. Oh my God, you're being no, 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 no. I know bitches. I know bitches who follow me. I know bitches in my industry. I know bitches who are influencers. I know bitches who are just regular people who don't follow me but are aware of me. Who want to know exactly who the fuck my eyebrow doctor is. But what did I do? I paid full price. And at the time I was just like, well, I'm not gonna sign away anything. Like when you get a surgery, there's like a consent form of media release where it says um, they can use your images like on their website. They can use your images on their website with your face redacted, only showing the results. They can use your images on just in, in house to where it's like if a client comes in for an appointment they can use your images there um they can use your images on the website like they can promote you um not even promote you but they can promote their work through your images and i was like no no no, babes i'm an influencer i understand what my what that has a value and i understand that that has a value so if you ever get a surgery and somebody's like oh like do you want us to be able to use your thing get a discount absolutely i was literally just talking to manny about this today where we were talking about this doctor I don't even know if they're a doctor, but like they were doing like this work that I was like, yo, like they're probably like they're putting like their clients like on blast. And I'm like, I'm sure a lot of these people did not get a discount because they're like, oh, yeah, like you can just use it. Like when you read that consent form, like you're just signing shit away. And like if you don't read it, but I'd be reading shit. I'm like, hmm, what am I saying? You know, like there's certain ones where it's like the surgery stuff, liability, whatever. But media consent as a public figure and as somebody who is aware that my name, image, and likeness has a value, 
I'm not signing that away. So I just didn't sign it away because I'm like, when I want to talk about this and release who did it, um, I definitely will. But now that everybody wants to know, oh, baby, I'm not telling nobody. I feel like it makes people like more upset. And I like that. <laughs> I love getting people upset, not gonna lie. But like I think it's funny. Like the doctor's doing good. The doctor is very busy. Like, would it boost his sales? Absolutely. But I paid full price. I didn't get no discount because I wanted it to be very hush hush, very private. If I wanted to talk about it, I could. If I never wanted to talk about it, I didn't have to. But I mean it's a very obvious surgery and I'm very like forthcoming with y'all. I'm very public about stuff. So me never telling y'all who my doctor is is gatekeeping. Um me not telling y'all where I get certain clothes is gatekeeping me like certain things like there's certain things that i gatekeep but like there's certain things that i don't like i'm not gonna lie be like i've never gotten a facial like not that i never gotten a facial i've only ever gotten two facials um in my entire life i don't really get facials that's not a lie but some people say oh i've never done this when it's a lie just to gatekeep yeah that's basically what gatekeeping is <laughs> What is that called, Gabby? That kind of thinking. Malicious. <laughs> you are camp and a consummate professional. I'm saying that with a flail and bass in my walk, girlfriend. Poir. I bat off to you over my pioneer CDJ 2000s. And girl, I will be your intro and outro. I don't know what that meant, but I appreciate that. <laughs> it seemed very positive. I need to watch her. That's the kind of videos I like to watch. Zamiga Zamora, Zamiga Yap. Surgery. So Lori Hill, uh, L-O-R-R-Y. I think it's a Y or an I. I think it might be an I. Oh, maybe it's a Y. Let me see. I, we follow each other on Instagram. I'm obsessed with her. I was watching one of her videos, and then I go to her Instagram to be like, oh, I wonder. Like, I see that she has it. It's with a Y. So Lori Hill, she looks like this. Lori Hill, just Lori Hill, um, super sweet, talks about surgery. She herself has had surgery and is extremely um, forthcoming about everything that she's had done, the good, the bad, like things that she doesn't like about her surgeries, things that she got fixed, what you can do to like prevent. Because one thing I really like is that she doesn't come at it as like, you had surgery and you're a liar. No, she's just like based on her expertise in plastic surgery. This is what she believes based on high resolution images of these celebrities captured over years, what she thinks they've had done because a lot of celebrities, a lot of celebrities get sometimes minimal work done where it almost doesn't even look like they had work done, but a lot of them have had work done. Bella Hadid doesn't even swear. Like she recently said she got a nose job. Recently. Girl, you've been had a nose job. She's been had a nose job since she was 16 years old and she was denying she ever had anything done to her face. Your face is pulled, babes. Your face, Kendall Jenner. Like, there's so many people that just don't want to talk about it or they deny it or all these things. And it's like, it's not fair to the average consumer when you're living your life thinking that, like, oh, my God, like, I would be famous if I just had hit the lottery when it came to my looks. A lot of these bitches didn't hit the lottery when it came to their looks. They bought their looks. And that's why they're, like, where they're at. A lot of them. Not everybody. Like, if you get all the work done and you're the most beautiful person in the world, that doesn't guarantee this level of accolade and success and fame. But a, it is achievable to get results like that. Um, and I that's why I like to be very honest about everything I've had done. I've had my brows done. I've had my teeth done. I get filler in my face. I've had liposuction twice. Like, I like to be very honest about these things because... Um, First of all, I never thought it would be possible for me as like a little gay boy back in Houston. Like when I would be obsessed with watching plastic surgery shows like um, Black Swan, not the Black Swan, Swan, um, the Swan. There was also like the Beverly Hills plastic surgery one. I can't remember what it was called, but it was like these, it was like a reality show where like you, you just follow them. It wasn't botched. Like that's like the most recent one, but it was like another one where like people were just getting surgeries in Beverly Hills. And I've always been obsessed with surgery, like always um, based off of me being insecure when I was younger. But to be quite honest, all the things that I've had done have made me a lot more secure in my looks. I know I wasn't ugly to begin with. I had a great foundation to build on top of. I'm very much aware of that, but why I like to be very forthcoming about the surgeries and work that I've had done is because I think it's very fair when I think it's fair 
to be able to talk about that so that if anybody is like, oh, I want to get something done or, oh, that's possible or like, oh, maybe I shouldn't get that done because Gabriel recommended this or that. Like, you know, um, that's why I like to be honest with it because sometimes like um, we don't know, you know, and it's like, oh, well, it seems like this person got this, so I should get it. And then you're like, oh, I guess it wasn't that, you know, so yeah, that's why I like to be honest about it. Beauty standards are constantly changing. Wait, Abby says beauty standards are constantly changing, which I feel will eventually cause some with plastic surgery to get more and more, never be satisfied and just unhappy. Oh, absolutely. Um, societal expectations of beauty and societal beauty expectations. That's the same thing, Gabriel. Um, societal beauty expectations are always changing. At one point, remember, super thin eyebrows were the thing. Being really skinny with big old titties back in the early 2000s, that was a thing. Like looking like a capital P, very Pendy Williams. <laughs> very wendy williams like that was a thing like now it's like having that big old butt but then if you look at somebody like the kardashians especially kim and chloe who have had a reduction a visible reduction to their giant posteriors um you're seeing that it's changing that even in of itself is a very interesting conversation because it's fascinating how like remember how back in the day the bbl was very hush hush it was very like it, it wasn't an accessible thing. Like, I remember lip filler before it really blew up. I was, like, one of the first people that was just obsessed with it. I was, like, I just want bigger lips. I want lip filler. Not a lot of people have had it done. Like, only a few, even beauty influencers, had had it done. Um, especially that were being very public about it. It wasn't very accessible as, like, to, I don't want to say everyday people in a condescending way, but, like, to main media consumption, main main societal consumption of like oh a lot of people now get filler but back then a lot of people weren't getting lip filler so i remember like being one of like the first um beauty influencers being very public about it and being very open about it yes there was people before me absolutely i didn't create the trend but i remember when i was talking about it there wasn't a lot of people talking about it so now with the bbl because it's so accessible now you can go to like fucking miami and get a bbl for like four thousand dollars cheap I mean, it's still expensive, but people are getting it for even cheaper, which mm, I wouldn't even recommend for it to be under $5,000. Like that in and of itself is very sketchy, but to each their own. I like specific results. And if you don't care about the type of results that I want, you go for it, girl. But now that it's being more accessible, it seems like the people who've had all that work done are changing it to go back to um, a standard where, because getting your BBL reduced is another added expense that a lot of people can't afford you know so they're gonna just have these big old exaggerated bodies um not everybody does but a lot of people do to where it's like oh it's no longer going to be the beauty standard to have such a big almost unrealistic butt um like kim's reduction looks really good like based on what i've seen in like photos like when she went to i think what was it the governor's ball where she's wearing that like crystal outfit it looks so good. Like, you can still see that butt, but it's not, like, that diaper butt. Remember when she used to have? It looked crazy. Now it looks amazing. I'm not going to lie. She looks good. She looks, she's skinny, but with a butt and, like, hips. Um, I mean, the hips are still kind of, like, crazy, but, like, you know, it's just, it's it's fascinating how, like, societal beauty standards definitely are always changing. Like, my brows, I'm always going to keep them bushy. Um, I'm never going to change that. Will I get a nose job? I don't know. I think I have a pretty cute nose, but, you know. Everything could always be fine-tuned, so, yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about the Amber Heard-Johnny Depp trial a little bit, but let's see what you guys are talking about. Um, absolutely love Lori. She is so open, and she helps with self-confidence by giving her insights. Sad that kids think that beauty is standard. Yes, absolutely. She's very, like, very um, loving with her delivery, like, very motherly because i think she's a mom she's not trying to be rude and harsh about it um her approach is very sweet and like authentic which is probably one of the reasons why i like it but she also knows a lot about surgeries and she knows these prices so she gives you a really realistic um idea of what these celebrities could have paid for because a lot of them are paying like at the top dollar to get the best of the best work to where people can't tell um so love Lori helm i think she has really good videos how Lori explains even the most subtle surgery, like Scarlett Johansson. Mm -hmm. Subtle little surgeries. Why lipo twice? Um, because the first time I didn't do my waist and because I thought I was going to look like too, too womanly. Um, 
so the second time that I got it, I did my waist and I did my love handles more because the doctor didn't take out that much in the beginning. Um, but I don't regret the first one because he also did my stomach and my stomach looks amazing. It looks phenomenal. Like there's some stomachs from lipo that look a little crazy. I'm not going to lie. I'm not trying to shame nobody, but that's not what I wanted my stomach to look like. So I'm very grateful for that first one. I wish I would have been more understanding of a surgery and really vocalizing what I wanted, but I also didn't even know what I wanted to the degree. So it was a very good learning experience. But my second round of lipo, which was no transfer, it was just lipo. The first one we did transfer um, the little fat that we did get because I, I mean, I wasn't that big. You know what I mean? I just had problem areas, which is the thing about lipo. Like lipo is not a weight loss solution. Lipo is a solution for stubborn fat um, areas that you're like, fuck, I need. I just want this area to be gone. That's what lipo is ideal for. So my second one, I didn't want to go under. I have a um i found a really good doctor here in beverly hills who does it to where you're awake so you don't have to be put under i don't like being put under um if i don't have to it's like i just hate the feeling of like waking up and your body's kind of like traumatized from that and the surgery so um i just wanted lipo on my waist on my lower back and he kind of went up my back as well so i have it like all back here and he just took out all that fat and just kind of gave me more of like not a waist waist but a waist because I was I was very square like I was gaining weight on my sides but not on my stomach and not like on the middle of my back so I was like mm. are you finna gas like gatekeeper lie to us no I'll tell y'all when I'm doing that <laughs> but that's why I got lipo twice absolutely and this generation looks up to them so being honest and true is key when being an influencer of any type it's also a way to share your experience through your platform yeah and like not everybody has to share it absolutely but I think it's good to have a balance of influencers who do share um, if there's going to be influencers who don't share their procedures um, because I think setting unrealistic beauty standards is already in and of itself very um, kind of toxic so I like to make sure that whatever beauty standards I'm setting I'm being very forthcoming and honest about them you know you know yeah. <laughs> beauty standards okay I read that one Soon on over, you lying <laughs> about your narco boyfriend fantasy. I'm going to continue to lie. Not Yes, Dr. 90210, Artie Love. That is the name of the show. It was on E. I used to love that show. That's what it was called, Dr. 90210. I think, I think so, right? All I know is you can't erase poor bone structure. I heard your name on a few drama channels, and I've been following you since. <laughs> Um, I'm a 47 year old funky girl from Australia and I am a DJ period I love that DJ queen K-W-E-E-N um, yeah I do have pretty good bone structure I'm not gonna lie like my chin I know I have facial hair but as you can see it is pointy so it's very almost feminine like um, my jaw is my jaw so I don't get, like a lot of people ask me about my like who does my chin I've got, I've had quite a few people. So who does your chin? Because a lot of people get chin filler to create projection. I naturally have them. Period. Shout out to my Mexican parents. Um, but yeah, I have a pretty good chin. I have a pretty good jaw. I've never had anything done to them. I've had offers of like, oh, we'd love to do your jaw filler and this and that. I just don't want to mess with it because I feel like this area, based on what I've seen, I've only seen a few guys where I'm like, yo, that looks fire. But I don't mind a very because I have a heart shaped face. That's what I've been told. Um, so I kind of like that. Like, it's very that. Like, I like the point. Um, the triangle of youth is an upside down triangle. So like this. So I like to create that triangle constantly. So from my eyes to my chin, from my cheekbones to my nose, from my eyes to my nose, um, from my cheekbones to my chin, from my cheekbones to my lips. Like, I like to create that angle because once the triangle turns like this, that's the triangle of age because everything starts to sag so you're no longer like <gasps> lifted with like going it like this it like it the triangle changes you know so i'm trying to keep that triangle perfectly surgery is a downward spiral people are seldom satisfied they just move on to something else on their tick list by one love xx i definitely agree and disagree with that i think it's very subjective to each person um it just depends on the person like, I am aware that I shouldn't get too much work done, but I am also aware that I want all the work done. You know what I mean? And I'm always going to be like, mm, maybe a little bit here, a little bit there. And it's like, no, 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 Gabriel, you're literally stunning. You don't want to fuck it up. Just do a little by little. Um, yeah. 
So it just depends on the person. Some people definitely do too much. They get carried away. Um, but some people don't. I feel like some people have had really good work done and they know like, okay, I've done enough. Um, yeah. So um, it just depends. I feel like it depends on the person. Background is giving me Los Bukis vibes. Is it? Isn't it fun? I was like supposed to shoot it at night because I thought you wouldn't be able to see the purple lights. But I think this is still pretty fun, right? I think it looks nice. Does lipo work for belly fat? As I heard from people that it doesn't work for belly fat. No, it works for belly fat. I got my um, belly fat lipo, like right underneath my belly button. Like there was like a little pooch that I would have. Um, and I don't like doing cardio or ab work. So that part was very difficult for me to get rid of. So I got that lipo. And the thing about lipo, I want to say, what is it? Like it doesn't grow back for like seven years or something like that. So I just don't really gain weight in those areas um you also have to have a really good doctor that really takes out all that fat because there's been some people who like get lipo but then they gain weight but because the doctor left little pockets of fat so uh, they gain it in just that little spot where the doctor missed the fat so remember lipo is not weight loss lipo is a solution for stubborn fat areas that you cannot get rid of through regular exercise or things like that if your weight fluctuates a lot be very aware that there might be some complications as you fluctuate with weight um but remember just do your own research do diligent diligent research on any surgery that you want to get okay so about what can we talk we can talk about anything. I went through the thin eyebrow area. I just told my beautician that I wanted one part of me to be thin. <laughs> they are waiting on a thick sculpture today once I get the ring light going. When's another makeup and opinions coming? Soon, hopefully. I am still not over your Cheeto salad video. I don't know why it's so satisfying. It really is. Like some cucumber with hot Cheetos mm, and add some mango. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Gabriel, thoughts on Chloe and Tristan in the last episode? I have not kept up the best with this season of the Kardashians, but I did keep up with that episode. And do I feel bad? No. Because at this point, this is the third time he has cheated on her. And you have chosen time and time again to forgive this man who has publicly dogged you twice already. This third time, I don't feel bad for you. The first time, it was the Jordan Wood situation, which to me, I hated how they handled it. Um, I hated it. I just, I hated it, how, they, how it was handled. Because it's like, y'all do the same thing. How are you going to be mad at a girl that did this, supposedly did the same thing to y'all? Because she said he kissed her. Um, I don't know what happened. But she said, he kissed me. And they're like, no, y'all did more than, I don't know what happened. But basically, at the end of the day, it felt like lines were being crossed. Absolutely. But they have all done that. Kim, Chloe, and Kylie have all gotten their friends' mans. And that's all public information. Like, I don't know no insider tea about that stuff. That's all public information. Like, Chloe had gotten French Montana from Trina. Um, I remember there was like a thing about Lamar and with Kim, like she would, she took Kanye from Amber Rose. Even Amber Rose was very public. She's like, bitch, I would still be with Kanye if it wasn't for Kim throwing herself, sending nudes to him all the time. Um, with Kylie, Travis Scott was dating Justine Sky. So all these girls do that. I like the way Kylie like handled it. It was just like, yo, um, she didn't seem to handle it to me the worst because it seemed like oh i mean you still did that to my sister so blood is thicker than water but i'm not gonna publicly dog you you know what i mean like you're still my friend um like for a very long time i wonder if they'll ever be friends ever again hopefully you know what i mean like I, i'm always like a hopeless romantic in anything whether it be friendships or relationships um but with the chloe thing i don't feel bad like i don't feel bad he showed you who he was multiple times multiple times multiple times no 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 babes um what is it fooled you once shame on him fooled you twice shame on you fooled you three times girl at this point you're a broken record constant like 
I don't feel bad. Like, I don't feel bad. And it's like, I don't like that whole conversation of like, well, I wanted to like, you know, ma- maintain this relationship and I wanted to have all my children with the same man so that like my kids have this like great, great image of the girl. No, a fake curated image for your children is not beneficial to them. It is not beneficial to them. Um, they're still going to see on the internet when they get older, the things that he did. You know what I mean? So like, I don't understand how somebody who was probably one of my favorite people on that show because she was such a badass. She was so tough. She was very like, no, you don't fuck with me. You know, standing up for Courtney when fucking Scott was such a douchebag. You know what I mean? She was like, no, I would never be with a man like that. Da, 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 da. And look at that. You were. So do I have sympathy? No. The first time, mm, that sucks. Like, that sucks. You know what I mean? To be, like, cheated on, that definitely sucks. I've luckily never been cheated on. Well, I haven't even really been in a relationship in Los Angeles since I've lived here now. I've lived here for, like, seven years. So, you know, I don't know nothing. <laughs> but with that, it's like, I don't feel bad. Like, he, this is now the third time he's cheated on you. Like, I don't feel bad. And if y'all do, it's like, that's that's to you. But I don't. I don't. Sometimes I'm a man and I'm not overly emotionally invested in something to where it's like, no. But she loved him and she was willing to like that. No, I don't care. I don't care, babes. Well, I want to have like the same father and I don't care. Like he was a dog and he showed you time and time again. There was also a huge age difference. Like, um, Alexa, what's Khloe Kardashian's age? Khloe Kardashian is 37 years old. 37. Alexa, what's Tristan Thompson's age? Here's something I found on the web. According to wealthypersons.com, being born on March 13th, 1991, Tristan Thompson is 29 years old. 29, almost a eight. Alexa, shut the fuck up. Fucking giving me a paragraph for somebody's age. Like, girl, shut the fuck up. Um, a eight year difference. When they met, I like, if right now he's 20, what did she say, 29? 29, right? Um, Five years ago, four years ago, when he was 25, 24, and she was in her early 30s, 32, 33. Um, why are you trying to create a life with somebody who's so young, especially like an athlete? I'm very much aware that do I want to date somebody in this world like that? Probably not, because I'm aware. Like, okay, 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 okay. I'm about to, I'm about to tell y'all way too much, and a lot of y'all are gonna get upset at this, and a lot of y'all may not agree, but I'm just giving you the tea, okay? And it's not personal tea about them. A lot of these men in Hollywood are aware that life is at their feet. They can now do anything and everything. They can try anything and everything. And limiting themselves to a monogamous relationship doesn't always seem fun when they're these fine-ass women throwing themselves at them. Throwing themselves at them. And the reason why a lot of women don't cheat as often as men is because, and I may be wrong, But based on the data and conversations that I've had with women, women tend to be more emotionally driven than men who are more physically sometimes driven. Yes, men can be monogamous and yes, women can cheat. But based on what I've experienced in conversations that I've had, a lot of women don't tend to cheat because they prefer sex that's more emotionally um, derived yes some women just sometimes want to have sex i get that but based on the conversations i've had some women are like i get off better with somebody that i love and somebody that i care for than just any random guy me as a guy i'm aware that i can get off with somebody whose name i don't even know (laughs) it's just it is what it is like some it, it doesn't have to be so emotional sometimes it's just a physical interaction once I leave, I'm I'm out. I'm mentally out of that situation. I'm back to normal. I'm like, what do I want to do? Like, who do I want to hang out with? What kind of, kind of conversations do I want to have? Some people I use just for that physical interaction. And it's not so emotionally derived. Do I want to be in a monogamous, 
monogamous relationship? Absolutely. Would I cheat? No, because I don't believe in cheating. I don't think that's a like that's not something I would ever want to do. I think it's totally unfair to not be able to communicate that with somebody. Is like, hey, I'm not fully satisfied. Hey, I'm not fully happy. I think that needs to be spoken about. And if you can't come to an understanding, then you don't have to be together, or you're gonna have to compromise. Um, but don't cheat. There's no reason to cheat. I don't think there's a reason to cheat. Um, for no, there's not a single reason to cheat. I'm sorry, like there isn't. There's never a to me justified reason to cheat ever ever in a relationship ever i don't care well i haven't had sex or this person hates me or like that no 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 no. be single then single people don't have to answer to nobody other than themselves and their bill collectors you know what i mean (laughs) but i believe what, what was i even talking about i don't even know but um oh celebrities and men these men are tasting everything and it's not just cis het women look at this lady (laughs) it's not just cis het women some of these men some of these musicians some of these athletes some of these actors they like to explore and in the city of los angeles where the menu is vast you can taste so many different things um and monogamy at that point isn't the most it like okay monogamy in the everyday conversation to straight people cool i I just i'm not i'm not gonna tell you how to live your life but i get why people do it because it's like i want to have a family i want to have a home i want to raise children um it's great to have that partnership absolutely But there's some people, especially in LA, who are more open. And it's not just gay people. It's also straight people. It's a lot of different people. Like, I've been offered by straight people to, like, come have a threesome with them. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, my God. Maybe I'm just going to be with the guy. Maybe they want me to be with the girl. Maybe they just want me to be with both of them. Like, I don't... I I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I truly do. If anybody ever wants to have sex with me and they tell me, thank you. That's really sweet. so sweet. Don't touch me. But thank you for letting me know. (laughs) um yes amen speak the truth honey i have read that as well like there's some kind of difference between physical cheating and emotional cheating such finding comfort with someone other than your significant other absolutely like and this is the thing this is the thing okay i was never open to the idea of an open relationship in the gay community not everybody but there is a large percentage of couples in the gay community who who are in open relationships, especially in the Los Angeles area. I've encountered a few. (laughs) But I, growing up, was fed the idea of monogamy and thinking, no, I want to be with one person and they're going to be with me and we're going to be happy. And it wasn't until I met um, this Middle Eastern friend of mine. um, And she isn't like the most like religious and like strict and conservative, but she has an idea that she wants to kind of um, marry a man within her own um, beliefs, her own religion, and like her own kind of background too. And I get that, like you know what I mean. Like me getting with like a Latino is because we understand each other's culture. You know what I mean. I'm not I'm not opposed to any other culture, but I understand the like want for that. So at one point we were talking about that, and she's like, "No, I would be in an open relationship." And I remember I was I was gagged. I was like, "Really." And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, I mean, but aren't you like, like religious? Like, aren't you conservative? Or like, aren't you this? And she's like, yeah, but I'm also understanding that there's going to be some things that I sexually do not want to do. And who am I to tell my husband, who I want to be with for the rest of my life, that he can never do those things? And like, one of the things that she said was, she's like, I don't like to give head all the time. And I only do that. I'm only going to do that for my husband. And even then, I don't know if I'm going to be doing it all the time. So who am I to tell him he's never going to be able to get head? She's like, what if I do it? And then I'm like, no, I don't want to do it for a whole year. Then he can never get it. And I was like, so you want him to go out? And she's like, well, no. It's like, one of the rules will be, don't embarrass me. Make sure you're being safe about it. And like, make sure you're doing your due diligence. But like, don't do it in our local city to where I'm going to find out. Make sure it's not some girl that's coming around my parties or, like, in my inner circle. Um, make sure you're being safe with it. Make sure you're, like, doing all the due diligence. Um, 
and I don't want to find out about it. Like, make sure I don't find out about it. And I was like, wow. It wasn't so, like, telling me, well, Gabriel, why not? Like, you know, I think people sometimes, and that's one of the things that it, that conversation taught me is that, like, when you don't agree, you don't have to be the opposing thought or you don't have to try to make somebody agree with you. Um, she wasn't trying to make me agree with her. You know, she wasn't like, why don't you want to be in an open relationship? She was just like, no, this is my experiences or my thoughts on it. Um, this is my conversation. And it allowed me to not feel so defensive or anything like that. Not that I would be, but you know, some people are, would be defensive in certain scenarios. And she was like, um, I, I, it allowed me to be like, wow, if she's open to it, maybe one day, not, not in the beginning, babes, like I want monogamy in the beginning, but maybe like after being together for like five, 10 years, I can't expect a man to be a hundred percent satisfied with me at all the time. Maybe he will. Great. But me being a man, I'm aware that even me as a single man, I like to taste different things. Um, and it's fun, you know? I don't always go back to the same thing. And sometimes I do. So maybe like later on, once I'm very, very secure about where our relationship is and there's a lot of communication and a lot of understanding as to what we feel comfortable with, maybe down the line I could. I don't know. But I don't want to say I would never be in an open relationship. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. So I think, oh, a lot of celebrity couples not a lot but like quite a few are open to where they get to explore other things especially when they're traveling a lot especially when you're having like these two big celebrities who are sometimes only seeing each other maybe a week out of a month a week out of every two months you know they're talking on the phone all the time like maybe the man is just he has somebody to help get him off um and sex isn't always so emotionally based for a man so I, I don't want to say I get why Tristan cheated, but I see why he was like, well, I have all these options. You know, he's an attractive guy. Um, he's very tall and he has a big, we've seen the video. Like, remember that one that got leaked? Like, we've seen the video. So, I mean, damn, dude, he's cheated on her so many times. Like, ooh, ooh. So... Moral of the story, I don't feel bad for Chloe. <laughs> is it entertaining TV? Absolutely. But when she's like, remember the last one? She's like, this isn't like, this isn't for TV. This is my life. And she's crying. And it's like, okay, girl, at this point, you keep crying over the same motherfucker. I don't feel bad for you. I don't. Like, you look dumb. You look dumb. But this allows for the story to develop to where eventually she could get a man that treats her so right and treats her so good very much kind of like how sierra found what's his name she left future who was like dogging her and like treating her like shit russell wilson and now they're so happy um and they seem so happy and content and it's like wow she found somebody that would treat her right and treat her the way that she wants to be treated. And there's always going to be that person out there who's going to treat you the way you want to be treated. So don't settle for anything less than what you feel you deserve with realistic standards that there's some qualities that definitely could be worked on. But if you're like, I want this and I'm not, and I don't want to settle for it. Like if you have certain standards and certain boundaries that you're like, I want a man who's going to be monogamous. Um, that's a conversation you need to be able to have and be like, Hey, are you comfortable with this? Um, and just being honest, like being so honest, like I love an honest conversation of being like, hey, I want this. Hey, I don't want this. Um, I think that's very important in any relationship, whether it be friendships, whether it be family, whether it be significant others, whether it be at work. Um, having those honest, sometimes uncomfortable conversations can lead to less discomfort in the future because it could be uncomfortable just for that conversation. And that conversation could last 30 seconds up to 30 minutes an hour. But you were only uncomfortable for that as opposed to like bottling something up and letting it eat at you for days, weeks, months, years. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, what are you guys saying? How do you see the future when it comes to social platforms and how influencers can grow? Any advice for anyone wanting to start? Do's and don'ts? Um, do it now, babes, because the more you wait, the, lo the harder it's going to get. Each, each day, it gets harder and harder for people to get into the social media space. Um, create content. 
just create it find out what it is that you want to create and don't be like okay this this is not gonna sound real mean a lot of people oh no some people have something to say a lot of people just want to say something there's a difference okay there is a difference and some people think that social media is their therapist some people think that they're like an oracle a fucking prophet and they want to go on the internet to change people's lives and things like that and it's like calm down calm down what is the messaging that you want to put out there maybe it's like hey i just want to talk about makeup and i want to create a fun community of makeup lovers um you know cool absolutely it's like oh i want to create change as to justice reform um and criminal justice reform um i want to create change and conversation around this or that absolutely or i just want to do dances on tiktok absolutely like see what influencers you admire and you look up to pick like three to five that you're like okay this is the type of content i would like to create never copy never plagiarize because you will never become authentic and you will go down a spiral of always wondering why you're not like if you're always trying to be somebody else, you're always going to lose because they're being themselves and you're trying to keep up. So you can be inspired and you can admire and you can then create your own. But yeah, I hope that made sense. <laughs> <laughs> I have read that as well as some kind of difference between physical cheating. Oh, yeah. Yes. Amen. Speak the truth, honey. Do you think you can be friends with someone where you have a crush on or better keep the distance until it's normal again? This is by Munerius. Um, I am not the best at being friends with somebody that I have feelings for. In the past, I've only voiced it twice and I have been shot down of like, oh, I only see you as a friend. And it's like, okay, well, I can't, I can't be friends. Like I thought is, I thought this was gonna, I don't know, become something more. Um, I also need space because to be like turned down by somebody who's like yo i have like love for you like i really like i vibe with you and like da 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 and then to hear them date other people and then to hear them like talk about like oh this guy and like this and that and it's like okay so i like you have love for me we vibe we connect but you don't want to be with me it then shows me that it's because of the way that i look but like this is how i'm only talking about experience because i remember with this one guy we were like getting to know each other for like about a month and a half, almost two months. Um, and he was living for me. Like, and I was like, is this something more? Like, I don't know. Like, I I definitely can admit that I definitely misinterpreted the situation because he turned me down and he said he didn't see me like that. I thought it was becoming that or it could become to that or something more. But I get it. I misinterpreted it. But he was like, when I told him and I'm like, he's like, oh, I just like, dude, I like, I live for you. I have love for you. Like you just, you get me. Like I just, I've never been able to like connect with somebody like this, but I just don't see you in that way. Oh my God. It just reminds me of that Sam Smith song. Um, not in that way where it's like, and it's that exact song where it's like, I love you, but just not in that way. And I remember this guy told me that and I was like, damn, like, I don't always like go out of the way to tell somebody that I like them. And when I did, like, ooh, to be shot down, it, like, hurts a little. And I just know I'm not strong enough to be, like, around somebody that I have feelings for to be turned down. So it wasn't, like, a long-standing friendship of, like, f- multiple years. Um, so I think that was a lot easier for me to be, like, mm, I'm okay, cool. Um, I completely understand. Thank you for letting me know. But I'm going to just need space. Like, I'm going to need a break from this because I need to, like, you know, get over the emo- get get over the emotions. And maybe one day we could be friends. But until then, I, I need space. Don't message me. If and when I feel comfortable, I'll message you. For weeks, motherfucker was messaging me. Hey, how are you? I wouldn't respond. Hey, like, how's it going? Miss you? No. No. One time I remember, I was, like, a month or two later... I was like coming home from the club and it was like late and I was like doing stories and like eh, living for myself, like walking through the parking lot to the parking garage of my building, like going up. I go all the way to my room, I'm washing my face. Um, my phone is on silent after like 2 a.m. So unless you're on my favorites, you're not getting through. My phone's not ringing. Like it's, it's the screen's not lighting up. And I remember he was like, 
I wash my face and I dry my face. I look at my phone and I have a missed call and messages. And it said, and I remember like when we like stopped like communicating, I had said, but I understand you're going through a lot. So if you ever are in like a, an emergency and you need somebody to talk to, because it was like a mental thing, right? Um, you can hit me up. So when I see a missed call and I see a text message that says, you said you would be there if I needed you. I'm like, fuck, okay. I call him back. And he's like, I'm like, I don't say hello. You called me. I know I'm calling you back, but you called me. (laughs) So I'm on the phone and I'm like, I'm not like, I don't like he picked up and he's like, hey, and I'm like, well, what's up? And he's like, um, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm getting ready for bed. What do you want? Are you in an emergency? Like, is this an emergency? Like, what's wrong? And he's like, no, I just, I just been thinking about you. And I'm like, are you drunk? And he's like, I mean, I went out and I had a couple of drinks. Babes. Are you in an emergency right now? And he's like, no. Cool. Don't call me or text me unless it's an emergency. I told you I needed space. This is some BS. Leave me alone. You have a blessed night. And I hung up. I was like, no, I'm not doing this. Like, and the part that hurt was, all that effort to tell me that I was such an amazing person, that he had so much love for, that he cared for, that I had changed his life and I was made like all this shit just to like not want to be. And you don't have to be with me. Absolutely not. You do not have to be with me. But the guys that you were with look nothing like me and you couldn't find a guy. So you had a specific look that you said, I want to be with a guy like that and then explore a relationship. Period. Absolutely. I get that. But miss me with that shit. Miss me with that shit. Because I don't want somebody who's like, okay, you look like what I want. Let me then get to know you to see if I, if I vibe with you. No, 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 babes. That's not how I, that's not what I want. I don't want someone who first, like, I get it. Physical attraction. I totally understand. But I want somebody who's like, yo, like, you, like your personality, like you is who I want. The physicalness comes and goes and it can change and i get it for some people it it definitely fulfills them for me it doesn't for me what fulfills me is a mind somebody's mind somebody's person somebody's personality somebody's ethics somebody's moral somebody's just like somebody's love empathy like all these things of who they are as a person is what i value in wanting to date somebody so when I was like, if I looked like the guy that you want to be with, we would be together. And I'm not going to be thinking about that shit and potentially damaging my own mental health and my own image of what I look like and trying to chase some motherfucker who would only be with me if I look some type of way, not because of who I am as a person. I don't have to deal with that. I don't have to deal with that. Miss me with that shit. I've seen him like years later. So nice. Like wanting to come up. I remember we were at this party. He came up to me and I was like, oh, hi. Like, hey. Um, We had some mutual friends. So he was there. And he's like, hey, how are you? I was like, oh my God, I'm good. How are you? Like, I'm not gonna be petty. Like I'm over it. Like at this point, like, like honestly, like probably like a month or two, like no, probably like three months after that. Like I started to like this motherfucker. Like, you know what I mean? Um, I don't just like anybody. So he was like, hey, how are you? Like, da 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 Like, having a quick little conversation. He's like, we should hang out sometime. Like, you know, like, I miss you. Like, you were so fun. And I'm like, we knew each other for less than two months, babes. And I literally was like, oh, aw. I don't, I don't think so. But it's so nice to, like, see you and catch up. And he was like, Oh, um, yeah. And I'm like, are you getting it? Like, I changed the subject. I was like, are you getting anything to drink? He's like, no, I'm not drinking tonight. I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna go get a drink, but I'll see you around the party, right? And he's like, yeah. Um, 
And I remember I just like left, but I'm like, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm not gonna lie and be like, yeah, we should hang out. No, I don't. Like, we knew each other for less than two months. I only really was pursuing that type of relationship. And I don't say that in like a relationship. For him, he was pursuing a friendship. I was pursuing something a little bit more and thinking that it, it could potentially be more. When it wasn't, babe, I have plenty of friends. I have plenty of friends. And I know some of you might, like, that's a very cocky thing to say. I'm a very cocky kind of bitch, okay? I have plenty of friends. I don't need more friends. I look at my time as money. I invest my time into people. And I don't have that much to be investing into everybody. So the people that I do have in my personal life are the people that I want to invest into as a person-to-person relationship, friendships, family, coworkers, colleagues, um, y'all. I invest a lot of my time into y'all. I know that there's a lot of people who follow me that are like, I would love to be friends with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I get it because we vibe and we connect. I'd rather be friends with y'all than some motherfucker who I told I liked him. And he's like, oh, no, I don't see you that way, but we should be friends. Absolutely. You want to be motherfucking friends with me. Hundreds of thousands of people want to be friends with me. And what about it? Why Why are you any different? Oh, because you think I'm fun and I'm cool? Absolutely. A lot of people do too. And I know it's cocky, but I'd rather be cocky than be made a fool. Like, no. I know a lot of people want to be my friend. Why? Because of who I am, who I know, what I do. Absolutely. I know y'all don't because you're like, no, I just like your personality and that's what I appreciate. I absolutely love that. And that's why I like to have conversations with y'all. I open my DMs with y'all. Um, and I'd be having conversations. Absolutely. I love that far more than a guy who's like, yo, like you're so cool. I know I'm cool. I've done my due work in my mental health in understanding who Gabriel is in how I speak, how I treat people. Absolutely. A lot of people would love to be in my life. And that's why I'm very picky as to who I allow in my life, because I'm not going to allow anybody to fuck with my energy, fuck with my aura. Like, and it's like, well, you could have been friends, Gabriel. Absolutely. I learned from that experience that not everybody that I feel a connection with, especially a cute, attractive gay man has to lead into that. Absolutely. One of my really good friends, he's like a designer, Oscar Gutierrez. I remember we were having a conversation about that. I wasn't into him in that way because I had friends who were into him. And I was like, oh, no, like if my friends are into somebody, they call dibs. Like, I'm not into it anymore. But I remember we were having a conversation where he's like, it's hard sometimes to have gay friends because they like, because I'm an attractive guy, they eventually end up getting feelings. And then when they tell me and I don't reciprocate that, then they're like, they kind of get, some of them get upset. I didn't get upset with that other guy but it's like some of them get upset and they start rumors or some of them are like get hurt or like all these things and it's hard and i was like wow i never thought about it that way so where it's like true like not every relationship with every single gay man has to lead into sex or love or anything other than just a friendship you know so that was a learning experience for sure but basically to that point i can't be friends with somebody that i like okay or somebody that i have feelings for um i commend people who can absolutely more power to you i know that i can't and i'm aware of that and it's better to be aware of it and setting up those boundaries than to not be aware of it and be hurting myself at the end of the day i need to make sure gabriel's good both mentally physically and spiritually like i need to make sure gabriel is good that guy was like, I've never met anybody who speaks in third party. And I was like, I don't speak in third party. Me right now. I need to make sure Gabriel's got. <laughs> um, how long have we been live for? I don't even know. An hour and a half, bitch. Oh, my God. Okay, let me see. I was going to say, like, all this stuff. Like, the Amber Heard and Depp and Johnny Depp trial. Like, the reaction to the verdict. All these things. I was going to talk about Pride Month. You guys, it is Pride Month. Make sure you are. I'll definitely try to link organizations down in the um, description down below in the YouTube video once this goes up on my channel that you guys can look into and donate if you want to. Um, it is a very important month for um, visibility and amplification of the LGBTQ community um, because to this day, I still get homophobia. To this day, I still get homophobic comments, homophobic stares, um, homophobic DMs. Like, homophobia is still very much alive and prominent in a lot of spaces. Half of this country is conservative. Parts of this world, being gay is still illegal and you could be killed for it. So let's be aware of that. 
Um, make sure you're keeping up with Drag Race. I love this season's Drag Race of All Stars. <laughs> what are you guys saying? I appreciate you. I'm really grateful for this opportunity to be part of such an epic podcast, period. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you for the chat. Thank you, chat. Cindy, she says, it's called being proud that I'm able to hold as much friendship I can because you are blessed with good energy. You want to be surrounded with people who bring good aspects into your life. Absolutely. Like, And if you feel like somebody isn't bringing that good vibration into your life, then you don't have to be in it, babes. You don't have to be in it. You get to decide what it is that you want in your life. So be be, be cocky. Yep, I agree 100%. Thank you. Yes, being with someone who you feel connected is different is different level. When you find that person, it makes so much sense. You are able to grow together because of how real it is. Absolutely. I love how Latina you are. Period. Mi ve Ramos. Mi ve Ramos. I feel like there are so many options to create content. It seems you need to find what best fits your personality and what will drive your motivation to create good content. Yes. You have to be inspired by it. There is a dance track called Miss Nude by Sebastian. It's everything. It's always best to keep things simple and as you get the hand of it and add more to your content, oh, that's the content communication conversation. You being with someone who you feel connected is different level. Communication and connection, it's game changer, period. Gabriel, I met you at LA Pride like three years ago when you had that pink hair. I love you. Oh my God, that pink moment was everything. It was everything. I love that moment. That's the night. I mean, that's the day one of my nipple piercings got ripped out. I don't know how. I don't know how because I had that little, like, shirt on and then I had pasties over it. And for some reason, one of my pasties was missing. And then I looked. My piercing was missing. And it was, like, kind of, like, it was crusty. So I was like, God damn, I got ripped out or something. Um, But, yeah. Yeah. Let me see. Did I miss any? How do you see the picture? I've never seen her heard of a video being out is there one um why my husband never do that i couldn't do that even though i've offered him a one-time hall pass and said no now i'm open to a threesome oh period love that for you victoria everybody has a different type of relationship you have to know what works best for you and your partner and make sure to communicate because it's key absolutely cindy absolutely he would never my hubby said if he wanted that he would have never gotten married see i love that i love that he's like communicating that with you uh, I should know. I was born in 1991. 31. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Speak the truth, honey. Okay. I want to make sure I'm not missing too many messages. Since when you have the podcast here on YouTube? Well, right now it's being live because I'm like recording it. Then I'm going to edit out some parts. Honestly, only the beginning because there were some technical difficulties. And then I'm going to upload it on here. It is now where, because I wanted to create a YouTube aspect of it. You guys let me know in the comments down below. I wonder if I could just edit this video. Yeah. Alejandra, I love the concept of this podcast and how we get to interact with you. Thank you. I love them, which is gracias. Um, I think this is going to be really fun, a really fun format. I've been on for now for over an hour, over an hour, Gorge. <laughs> it's not what Adam says, Adam Ray, okay. He's like, hey, Gorge. <laughs> I am obsessed with how he says it. <laughs> obsessed with how he says it. Um, okay. I know we didn't get to everything that I wanted to talk about today, but... Now I know, come in with like three topics, Gabriel. Don't be have, coming in with too many topics because I know y'all have questions as well that you guys want to ask me and all those things. So I'm really excited to be creating this podcast with you guys because it's going to be cute and cunty. Um, yeah, I'm super obsessed. I'm super excited because I'm excited to like be getting back to these long conversations. This kind of like dumping of thoughts into the internet and seeing how we interact with the conversation. Uh, I, that's what I loved about the podcast because I was like, oh my God, I get to like dump out all these thoughts that are in my head. But I was like, oh my God, I'm only talking to myself. Like I was just sitting here like talking, going on tangents. I love a tangent, but I think this is going to be a lot more fun where we get to interact with each other. I've always wanted to know what is the secret? What y'all said once y'all met, y'all knew something and only y'all knew. I don't know. But that in and of itself is the working on relationship of, you know, sometimes you need 
space from somebody. Sometimes you need time from somebody. And then um, if and when you get to reconnect, reestablishing boundaries and reestablishing communication so that those type of not even road bumps, but like explosions don't happen. So that's a learning experience in and of itself. And maybe in the future, I'll be able to talk about it. Um, but right now, it's still something very private to where I'm like, I'm working on it privately, like as like a friend to a friend. There's seemingly no negativity. And that is truly refreshing, especially in this sometimes crazy world we live in. Be blessed, y'all. I know in the beginning, there's never negativity. Maybe one day when it gets bigger, there's going to be people in these comments and I'm going to need y'all to fight them for me. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay, you guys, I love you guys. Make sure you check out my Instagram at Gabriel's Mora. I will be working on the podcast Instagram and getting that. I'll link everything down in the description down below. If you guys ever have any questions, you can um, message me on there. Maybe I'll bring it up as a topic. I think that could be really fun or any other topics that you want me to talk about. I, this is going to be a weekly podcast. Um, that way we can hang out every week, these long form conversations. I think that's going to be really, really fun. Um, but yeah, make sure you guys let me know anything else, any thoughts, questions, concerns of how this whole format is. I'm super excited to know anything. Maybe I should tweak the audio. Maybe I should tweak anything. You guys let me know as well. I really appreciate y'all. I hope y'all have an amazing day today. I hope you have an amazing weekend. I hope you have an amazing meal today because I don't know what I'm going to eat today. And I hope it's good. I hope it's bomb. And I hope what you eat is bomb. Baby, you want to say bye? Baby, she's like dead asleep. Should I wake her? You guys, should I wake her? Should I wake her? Little baby. Little baby. Come here. Look at her. Come here. She's like, what the fuck, dude? I want to be like a family channel where I use my child for views. <laughs> Get by shop. She's like, yo, I'm trying to sleep. You sleep all day, little girl. You sleep all day. And you wake me up all night. Say bye, everyone. Que pasó? Que pasó? Ay, baby. Ay, baby. Here you go. She's like, bitch, you woke me up already. Okay. And make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified exactly when I go live with another podcast, you guys, because I will be recording them here on my channel and posting them here on my channel. I'm not creating a separate channel. Like, I think this will be pretty good. Oh, I have all this hair now on my face. Um, and until next time, dude, also tell me what we should be calling each other. S'mores, amigas, primas. I think, I don't know. You guys let me know. I have four beautiful feelings and they send their love. Oh, period. Have an amazing one. Okay, everyone. Bye, everyone.